Now, the Scottish Government has said it will increase the minimum unit pricing for alcohol by 30% from 50p to 65p. The move comes as part of plans to try and tackle alcohol-related deaths and hospital admissions. Let's take a look at what the price, mine, price rise means practically. Now, an average price bottle of vodka in Scotland will rise from £13 to £17, costing £6 more than a bottle of vodka in England. Meanwhile, a bottle of super strength cider is going to cost £15. That's £11.50 more than it would in England. A bottle of scotch will cost a minimum of £18.20. That's up from £14. All right, well, let's bring in Alison Douglas, Chief Executive of Alcohol Focus Scotland. Alison Douglas, thanks for making the time to talk to us today. Uh, your response, first of all, to the increase. I guess this is something that Alcohol uh, Concern welcomes. It's something that we and 30 other organisations have been campaigning for for over two years. The minimum unit price was supposed to be reviewed after two years of operation. That didn't happen. And so what sounds like quite a big jump in price is actually really just making good inflation since the policy was introduced in 2018. So it's really essential to have this increase in order to ensure the effectiveness of the policy. And Alison, why is it, though, that with this been in, being in place since 2018, we are still seeing alcohol death, alcohol related deaths in Scotland increasing? The first full year of operation saw a 10 percent reduction in deaths. Unfortunately, then we went into the COVID period and has been widely reported that has had quite a significant impact on alcohol consumption, not just in the UK, but uh, around the, the developed world, because people who tended to use alcohol to manage their stress and anxiety, unsurprisingly increased their consumption during the pandemic. So what we can say about minimum unit pricing is that things would have been significantly worse if we hadn't had it in place. Um, just to unpack that, in Scotland, we saw a 22% increase in deaths over two years. Um, and in England, we saw a 30% increase. And what the independent evaluation from Scotland's national uh, public health body found was that the only plausible explanation for that difference was minimum unit pricing. Yeah, and uh, uh, when Sharon Robinson was announcing it earlier, she did say that uh, minimum unit pricing has saved on average 156 lives a year. So uh, the evidence is there that it, it, is, a, it is effective. Now, I, I wonder uh, what you think about the profits that some retailers have been uh, making as a result of the difference in the minimum pricing and the amount um, that they can buy alcohol from the wholesale. Uh, there are some that are calling for a tax on that profits. Do you think that would be a good idea to then put that money raised back into healthcare prevention measures? We strongly support an alcohol levy on retailers because um, really even before minimum unit pricing, it's unhelpful that retailers are making such a significant profit on what is essentially a harmful product. But since minimum unit price has been implemented, it's simply unfair that while we're drinking less alcohol, we're paying more for it and that is going to the retailers. So we strongly support a levy that could be used to generate, to bring that, that additional revenue into the public purse and to use it to tackle um, alcohol treatment, um, support for people who are in recovery and also wider prevention measures. Yeah, and, and of course, you're calling for that levy. That levy is not in place yet, but perhaps the, the pressure will build on the government to bring it in. Uh, and you kind of brought me on to my next question. Alongside the increase in the price, what other measures uh, are coming in place to try and reduce, you know, the addiction to, to alcohol that people, that people have? Minimum unit price has to be part of the package of measures that we, um, that we take to address the kind of tide of alcohol harm that we have. Um, but it can't be the sole measure that we, we take, as you say. So we need to be doing all of the things that the evidence base tells us work. And that means tackling how alcohol is heavily promoted and marketed, how readily available it is, and also ensuring that services are there for people who have a problem. 
Uh, but are those services there? That's, that's kind of my point. You know, we've got this focus on increasing uh, minimum unit pricing, but I wonder what else is being done in the community to try and reach those people who are in the depths of their addictions. Because, you know, of course, the argument is that if you increase the price on booze, people who are addicted to it are going to pay for it anyway, and then there may well be deprivations to their life and their family life as a result because they're spending money on that when they should be spending on other things. The minimum unit price isn't really about tackling people who have an addiction or people who are dependent on alcohol. If you're dependent on alcohol, you wake up in the morning physically and psychologically craving alcohol. And clearly, price isn't going to be the, the most significant uh, issue for you in that situation. What you really need is intensive personal support to help you address your alcohol problem and to sustain your recovery. So this minimum unit price is not the answer for alcohol dependent people. But let's remember there's only about 50,000 people, far too many, but still a, a relatively small number, 1% of the Scottish population who are dependent. This policy is really about the over one million of us who are drinking above the chief medical officer's low risk guidelines. And that's where it's having its effect and it's having effect in uh, households who are drinking more alcohol, but short of dependence. So the fact that we're seeing these really significant reductions in deaths, you mentioned the alcohol specific deaths. Um, which are predominantly liver disease. But we've also got nearly the same number of lives saved in terms of chronic diseases, things like cancer and cardiovascular disease, which alcohol plays a significant part in. So the, overall, this is a really effective policy. It is a life-saving policy. OK, Alison Douglas uh, from Alcohol Focus Scotland.